It's all fun and games till someone gets shot. Before we start this video on reflection, I want to talk about a very old character select screen for Tekken 7. 2014 is where this one dates back to. There's another one that's probably 2015 or something like that, arcades. But when you look at both of these character select screens, the question that I ask is, are all these characters pretty much confirmed to return in Tekken 8? The only characters that I think will possibly not be in Tekken 8 is maybe Katarina, maybe Heiachi, maybe a lucky Chloe as well, and also a Shahid. But other than that, I think all of these other characters not only are key characters in the story, but also gameplay. Fang, Harang, Alyssa, Asuka, Zhao Yu, Paul Phoenix, Brian Fury, Steve Fox. What would Tech it be without these characters? Dragonoff. The fact that these characters was at the foundation, the core of Tekken 7, it shows how important they are to the overarching idea. You have these characters being here even before Kuma, before Yoshi, before Eddie. That is very powerful. I just want to note that because I think the topic of character roster is very important and I know a lot of people is thinking about it. But let's move on. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I guarantee you will not be disappointed with the content I am producing. A lot of people focus on just gameplay, just frame data, just combos, but the fighting games is so much more than that. These characters have story that we get invested into, designs that we love, and I think that part is forgotten. Like in today's video, we are going to be talking about Harada and how Jin was depicted in Tekken 6, but also the backlash from fans. Very exciting. This sentence is pulled from the wiki, but I also have the source so we can break that down and dissect it. It says, Harada recalls receiving letters from fans who were angry for turning Jin into the villain in Tekken 6. So there's two halves to this sentence. The first half, you have Harada saying that he got a lot of letters, hate, for what Jin has become. In Tekken 6, this was the first time that Jin was depicted as the villain. That's specifically what the story says. Jin is the villain in Tekken 6, and players did not like that. Ever since Jin's introduction into Tekken, he's always been seeming like the one who has potential, hope. This guy is the one who could potentially save us all from the Mishima Zaibatsu and Heiachi and Kazuya. So to see in Tekken 6 this character go down this dark path of destruction, it really uh, left, a, left a bad taste in all the characters' mouth. They weren't expecting it. And that's why you see in Tekken 7 uh, and also the brief looks of Tekken 8 that we got, they are depicting Jin as this anti-hero, as this troubled character, this one who makes tough decisions even though it may be right or may be wrong, you can argue the specifics, but the overarching story of what Jin wants to accomplish is, I guess you can say, for the greater good of humanity. What's very interesting, whenever I talk about Jin being the uh, good guy, everyone always goes back to what he did in Tekken 6. And I think it speaks to how tough of a decision that was for Jin Kazama, causing World War III to wake a demon and try to slay it, but then at the end of the story, at the beginning of Tekken 7, you find out that the demon isn't even slayed. That's a very tough pill to swallow, and also I think this is a great example of subverting viewers' expectations. When you think of subverting expectations, movies and video games usually go with a fake out death. And I guess you could kind of say that they did that with Jin and Heiachi and Kazuya. They always fake out death. But really what Jin's death was symbolizing, it was symbolizing the end of the devil gene. It was symbolizing a brighter future for humanity. But the fact that that didn't come to fruition, but not only that, that now we can't even see where the goal is. You have Azel being inside of Zafina. You have Claudio getting involved. You have Kazuya running loose. Like we can't see the goal anymore. There is no mission now. The only plan Jin truly has is getting rid of Kazuya and who knows how easy or difficult that will be when you talk about all the other factors that could play into that. Jun Kazama, Master Raven, 
Zhao Yu, Asuka, Claudio, everything. This sentence sources back to a Spanish news article that was done at the time of Tekken 7 launching on console. Translating from Spanish to English, Harada starts off by laughing. Whether you're at Camp Kazuya or Camp Jin, many people throughout the series love those villains that the Tekken series does quite well. So they are great admirers of Kazuya. But at the same time, Jin has loyal followers. I received a lot of comments from fans that they were not happy that Jin was almost a villain in Tekken 6. You can see here how he tweaks it and says almost. So people feel strongly in one way or another about these two. And I really wouldn't even say it's these two. I think that's just characters in general. Every character you like, don't like, you have an idea about who they are and who they are not. And this is one of the most important things when, when you're telling a story, especially a story that spans 20, 30 years, like fighting games. That's the thing, right? Fighting games has transcended time in a sense. When you grow up with a character, you change. You yourself experience life, but the characters themselves, they retain pretty much who they are. Like, for example, a character like Lily, this character is very controversial for remaining the same age throughout time. This character has not grown old. This character has not really experienced anything. Lily in Tekken 7 is the same exact Lily in Tekken 5. And that's because the developers are too afraid to change this character. You saw how they changed Jin. They made him almost a villain for a brief second and the community lost it. What if they do the same thing with a character like Lily or Paul Phoenix? Paul Phoenix, they can't even change his hair without the online community going crazy. So how do you expect them to and, and make that leap to make this character something truly different? It, it's, it's too hard for them to tell a story. And this is why I used to be super critical. Even though I talk about story a lot, I really don't be critical of a story unless it's it's nothing i get that they can't accomplish everything with every character but you have to try and tell some sort of story some sort of narrative it has to be some kind of triumph arc that these characters go on but so many of the Tekken characters and also street fighter they don't go on the arc because the risk of upsetting people is way too high you also have the Mortal Kombat route of telling the story where basically the characters are who they are. Scorpion is Scorpion, Sub-Zero is Sub-Zero, but now you just divide them on a team. So it's not really what the character individually wants, it's what Team Raiden wants, it's what Team Shao Kahn wants. So every character is themselves and is who they are, but now they're just operating as a team. And a lot of people like that story, but there's a lot of people who also don't like it because you lose that sense of self. You lose that sense of identity. It's now just team one, team two. With Tekken and Street Fighter, so far, they don't really do that. Well, Street Fighter kind of have lately. They've been doing team one, team two, but Tekken, it really doesn't do that. You can view the story from so many different angles and so many different perspectives. And honestly, in one way or another, you can kind of say that every character is almost a villain, almost not a villain. And I think that's what make characters, Tekken characters so good is that you can relate to them and you can see the different aspects of them, the flaws, the highlights, the goods, the bad. But when you're talking about Tekken 8, will they be able to develop the story? push the narrative or will they be too afraid of upsetting people like they did in Tekken 6 with Jin? One thing that Tekken has always done well is that it remained Tekken. Tekken has never got to a point where it felt like KOF or Street Fighter or Guilty Gear. You could be sitting watching Star Wars but now you feel like you're watching The Avengers. Tekken has never really done that. I would argue that Tekken has always been too afraid to really accomplish anything. In conclusion, Harada has said in the story for Tekken 8, they had to push it really, really far because of the lifespan of these games. Back in Tekken 1 all the way up to Tekken 6, these games came out in one, two, three years. But now with Tekken 7 being here for seven years, you have to change a lot of the game to fit 
that longevity. The story is a big part of that. So in Tekken 8, we're gonna get seven years worth of story in one game. So this is when we really can judge the game for what it is. Tekken 8, oddly enough, will be the first actual Tekken game that is 100% fitted to the modern landscape. It has nothing to do with arcades and it has nothing to do with two year cycle. This is gonna be a Tekken 7 that is built for esports, built for story, built to last. In this video, I just want to talk about this because I think the conversation is very exciting, very, but that's it. Thank you for listening to me analyze and break down the psychology behind these things. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.